This is Enough Said Sports. Happy Thursday night. I hope all is well in your world. It is all well here at Enough Said Sports. As we come to you this evening, um, I felt compelled to do a little video here this evening, uh, a little bit more uh, in depth about why it is that I'm, I'm still on the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, I know a, um, a lot of you out there are uh, going to be on the Phoenix Suns for Game 5. Uh, it seems like this narrative of uh, home and road and, and all of those things seem to be kind of playing a factor um, in, in people's betting for whatever reason um, because all the, all the games have been won by the home team so far. I'm one that do, that does not believe in in things like that. Um, I don't really think home court it makes that big of a difference as as much as people might think it does. Um, and in this case, especially with these two teams, uh, with this part of the year, the NBA Finals, they've played so many games already. There's such a large sampling size of everything. I think uh, the way these teams play supersede home court in a way. Uh, so I want to talk to you guys about uh, briefly here. Uh, uh, I'll do a little bit of a deep dive uh, into some of the things that I was talking about in some of my previous videos to kind of give you an idea of what I'm seeing. Uh, we'll start with the Phoenix Suns right here. And there's really three major categories that I kind of look at when I'm analyzing a team from a basketball perspective, whether it be an NBA team or um, a college basketball team. And that's three categories. That's overall field goal percentage uh, from the field. That's three-point field goal percentage and free throw percentage, okay? Uh, that munching you hearing in the background is my dog Sadie yet again. So she's making another cameo. But anyway, uh, those are the three categories I look at. So we'll start with the Phoenix Suns. Let's just get into it. We start with the Phoenix Suns. Uh, during, the, during the year, you, you can see here if you follow the mouse, uh, the Phoenix Suns shot 49% from the field, Um you know, that includes two-pointers and three-pointers. Uh, if you scroll over here, they shot 37.8% from three-point range. Uh, and then if you scroll over to free throw percentage, they shot 83.4% from the free throw line. Let's take a look at the Milwaukee Bucks. The Milwaukee Bucks shot 48.7% from the field, 38.9% from three and 76% even from the free throw line. This is throughout the regular season here. Now, when you look at this three-point percentage, it's quite impressive on the Milwaukee Bucks part because they look like they've actually attempted almost 200 more three-pointers than the Phoenix Suns. So let me get the exact number on that. Uh, the, the Milwaukee Bucks have shot 2,669 three-pointers to the Phoenix Suns, 2,493 pointers. That means they've shot 179 more three-pointers throughout the regular season, and they shot it at a higher clip. So that's pretty impressive on their part. Obviously, Phoenix is a much better free-throw shooting team. So this is why I'm going to break this down for you. So let's, let's take a look at game one box score here, okay? Game one, uh, the Phoenix Suns won the game. Uh, this is the game that Giannis returned from injury. Uh, they won the game 118 to 105. Uh, you look at the field goal percentage from the Milwaukee Bucks, that was at 45.5%, so that's pretty close to what they shoot. They shot 44%, 44.4% from three-point range, which is really good for the Milwaukee Bucks. That's higher than they shoot in the regular season. But they only shot 56% from the free throw line uh, in this particular contest. So when you look at that, that is going to be – Take a look. 20% off of their average, okay, from the free throw line. Plus, they only attempted 16 free throws. And I say only because we're going to look at the Phoenix Suns numbers. Phoenix Suns shot 46.6% from the field, which is about 3% less than they normally shoot. They shot 32.4% from the three-point uh, line here. Excuse me. I'm sorry. That's the Milwaukee Bucks. I'm going to go back up to the Phoenix Suns here. My apologies. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, that is right. Okay. So they shot 46.6% from the field, 32.4% from three. But they shot 96.2% from the free throw line. They went to the line 
10 more times in game one than the Milwaukee Bucks did. That was the difference in this basketball game. Uh, they shot a little bit under what they normally shoot from three, pretty close on the field goal percentage, a little bit less than normal for them. So the anomaly in this game was is that the Phoenix Suns shot much, much better from the free throw line than they normally do, and the Milwaukee Bucks shot very, very poorly from the free throw line, plus the Phoenix Suns got 10 more trips to the free throw line there in game one. That was the biggest difference in that game that allowed the Phoenix Suns to win the game. Now let's take a look at the game two really quick. Game two, the Milwaukee Bucks shot 45.2% from the field, just 3% less than normal, 29% from three-point range, which is going to be about 9% less than normal, 65% from the free throw line, which is about 9% less than they normally do as well. Actually, excuse me, uh, that's 11% less than what they normally do. So they really weren't close to their averages uh, in game two. All right. Phoenix Suns shot 49, 40, 48.9%. They shot 49% even uh, throughout the year. So they're right on their average. And they ended up in game two shooting a finals record 50% from the three-point line. That's unbelievable. Really, really, really high octane. Uh, that's going to end up being 13% uh, higher than their average. Uh, they also shot 2%, two percentage point, points higher from the free throw line. That enabled them to get the victory in game two. Okay, I consider that to be an anomaly, uh, the 50% from the three-point line. And let's take a look at game three. Phoenix Suns shot 48.2% right here uh, from the field, which is pretty close to what they normally shoot. Um, Three-point range, they were a little off, uh, 29%. Uh, versus 37.8%, 30, so they were about 8% off on that. And they actually shot uh, under on the free throw percentage as well um, at 68.8% there. They're, they're uh, quite a bit under their average of 83% on that. Phoenix, uh, excuse me, the Milwaukee Bucks, 47.8% from the field. Uh, they normally shoot 48%, so that's pretty close. 38.9% from three. That's their exact average from three-point range throughout the year and 76% uh, from the free throw line, which is also their exact average for the year. So now, it's the first game that the Milwaukee Bucks play to, toward their averages, and you see the score, 120 to 100, okay? That's what I'm saying. When the Milwaukee Bucks play up to, the, up to par, that's what you get, okay? Game four, let's take a look at this one. This is crazy right here. Phoenix Suns shoot over their average from the field, okay? They shoot 7% uh, under from the three-point line, but they actually shot one percentage point higher from the free throw line. So I'd say they were pretty close to their averages across the board in this game. This is the crazy part. The Milwaukee Bucks shot the ball 8% under their average from the field. They shot the ball 14% under their average from three. They did, they were, however, able to shoot better, a little bit better from the free throw line, uh, 82% uh, over the 76%. But the Milwaukee Bucks, when they're shooting like this, the Phoenix Suns should have won this game by a significant margin. This is what concerns me about the Phoenix Suns. They weren't able to get this game home last night. They should have gotten this game home last night. And when I look at these numbers and I see that the Milwaukee Bucks shot the ball as poorly as they did and they still were able to win this game, that is really, really, really bad news for the Phoenix Suns. I think that if the Milwaukee Bucks play anywhere near their averages, you're going to see another blowout uh, in this series in game five here. I believe the Milwaukee Bucks are going to shoot the ball significantly better and I think they're going to be a lot closer to their averages. But I just kind of wanted to give you guys a, a deep look, a little bit of a deep dive into some of the things that I look at. Obviously, uh, I, I, I don't have the time to, to show you everything that I do, but that's one thing that I look at, and I watch these averages, and I watch um, <clears throat> how above or below these teams are in their averages at times, and that really gives you a good indication of when this team plays up to par, what you're going to get. 
and I really think there's a mismatch here. I think the Milwaukee Bucks are much better, and I think these numbers bear that out. So let me know, guys, in the comments, as always, what you think. Really appreciate all the support. We're doing really well. We're growing. Uh, we're, we're rolling pretty good. If you haven't seen my Game 5 preview and prediction video, please check that out. Uh, and, again, really appreciate it. I will talk to you guys soon. Have a great and wonderful Thursday night, and happy Friday. Thank goodness the weekend is here. I will talk to you soon.